Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. What happens when you have a pole like this one for a tent and you've either damaged it to the point where it can't be used anymore or you've completely lost it? You need to get another one. This is one of two poles that I have for a couple of tents of mine, a Kelty Escape 2. And this is one of them. And let's say I need to duplicate this one because it's a cross pole design. They just go in opposite corners and they meet in the middle so they're the same length. And let's say I have this one, but I've lost the other one. How do I replace this? You may think, well, in order to replace this, all they have to do is get a hold of a manufacturer and order another one. The problem is, is they probably only have poles available for current models. Older models, they may not have and would not be able to source one for you. So you're down to making your own. A lot of cheap manufacturers don't even bother supplying replacement parts. The entire tent is disposable. If you get a small problem in it, makes the tent unusable, you gotta ditch the whole thing. They don't care, they just wanna sell you a new one. Even the major manufacturers, uh, Big Agnes, Kelty, MSR, the big companies like that may not have a pole for a older model. In fact, I know my Big Agnes Copper Spur UL2 has been redesigned twice that I know of since I bought it. So even if I called them up and says, I need a set of replacement poles for a tent I've got, they may not have the current model. They'll send me the one for the current model and not my old one, my legacy tent, and I'm still out of luck. So how would I make a tent pole like this when one's not available? It's simple. I'm simply going to order a replacement pole that is physically longer than the pole I'm trying to replace, and I'm going to cut it down. So I'm gonna bring the camera in here and show you exactly how to do this. Let's get started. In addition to our existing and new poles, we are going to need a hacksaw, preferably with a 32 tooth blade. 24 will probably work, but I'm going to use a 32 because that's as fine a blade as I can get. A tape measure, a flat file, and a small round file. Now that we have all of our tools and components, Let's get started. Even though these two poles, my existing and my replacement pole, look similar, there is one major difference, and that is right here. This pole is original to the tent, and I don't know if you can see that little dimple right there. That is used to hold the tip of the pole in place with some threads that are on that piece on the end. My replacement pole does not have that. It just uses the tension of the shock cord to hold it in place. If this is the type of replacement pole that you've gotten, we're, that's gonna make it very, very easy. However, if you have a little dimple like this that uses a thread in tip like this one, we're gonna have to do a little bit of research to see where we can cut this because you definitely don't wanna cut that off because then you won't be able to screw that tip back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the very first joint and I'm going to pull it apart. Well, I've got a coupler there and I don't want to cut this piece because what will happen is it will not fold up correctly and all the poles will be the same length. If I cut this one back, then that's going to bring this pole back to here and now it's going to stick out like that when I fold the poles up. So. I'm going to go to the other end and see what that's like. And again, we've got the little dimple there, so we can't cut that end. We pull this apart. Ah, there we go. That's more like it. I don't want to cut this piece off because then I'd lose the coupler. So I end up wanting to cut this piece right here. Now that's only if I have to do this. If I don't have this kind of end and it's just like this end, I don't have to worry about this. Basic rule of thumb is you want to cut the plain end that's closest to the tip. You do not want to cut anywhere else on a pole like this. Right here is where you want to cut it. However, this is not the one I want to cut. This one is. So, how much do I cut it? Well, let's line them up and find out. I'm going to assemble both poles and line them up end to end and then I'm very going to carefully 
move them from one end to the other until I can get the length of my pole measured and marked. And it looks like I'm going to have to cut it off right there. So now that I've got it marked, let's go ahead and disassemble the pole and start cutting. Now obviously I don't want to cut this with the shock cord in place. I'm going to have to take the shock cord out of it. You will not have to do this if you order a pole without a shock cord, but since this one was actually cheaper than one without a shock cord, I just went ahead and bought it without a shock cord. Now that we've got that undone, let's just go ahead and pull that piece out that we're going to cut and we'll get started cutting. Now I simply need to find my mark, which is right there. And I'm going to slowly, gently, and carefully start cutting. If you have power tools that do this, that's great, but all you really need is a small hacksaw, again with a 32 tooth blade. This is not going to be a speed contest. You want to go slow with very soft pressure and let the blade actually cut without smashing that pole. Now we have a cut, we need to take care of that end. That's what the files are for. The reason I want to file the outside is because there's going to be a little burr right here where the saw blade came through. So I'm going to want to even that out and make sure that it is nice and smooth. I can still feel a burr. Now it's nice and smooth. Now there still is a little bit of burr there. That's got it. To make sure there's no burrs on the inside that's going to interfere with putting this in or tear up the shock cord, I'm going to use this small round file and make sure that there's no burrs on the inside. I can't feel in there because my finger isn't that small, but all I have to do is slide this piece in and it looks nice and smooth. So now it's time to reassemble and try out our new tent pole. One other thing you're going to have to do probably is especially if you had to take out several sections. In other words, if you had to take out these sections plus cut this piece, you're probably going to have too long of a shock cord. So you're going to have to cut that down, especially if you take out several pieces. However, this is only about a foot and I think I'm going to be fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble the tent pole. And now with our pole completely reassembled, it's time to take it to the tent and give it a try. So now that I've got my replacement pole patterned after my original pole to replace the one that I've lost, it's time to put them in the tent and put it to the acid test. And it looks like I've successfully replicated my missing pole. So this is Backpack Act coming at you with this trail tip. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment on my videos. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.